friends this is the first video of my youtube channel um and this video is just gonna be raw real no editing um this video has been in the works for so long now um so this is my pregnancy journey with my son um up until birth and after birth with all of his diagnosis, um, everything that I went through. Um, this is just a lot of um, information to give because I feel like I had a lot of questions throughout my pregnancy and I was so overwhelmed but had so much support um, that like now I'm ready to tell everybody and um, I've had my time to think about everything and feel everything that I needed to feel and have answers um that was really the put off for this video um because i wanted to make sure that everything has been answered completely um so without any further ado let's get started um so in 2021 um in november i ended up having a miscarriage at five weeks um and it was pretty rough. Um, I didn't have to have a DNC or anything like that. My body expelled it naturally. Um, but it was just so heartbreaking. Um, and then throughout the whole month of December, it was really hard, you know, the holiday season, everybody's around. Um, and I was just feeling like every type of emotion and I was feeling things a lot stronger than I thought I should have. Um, it was just very weird. Um, and I felt like something was off. Um, so January came around and I was like, I still haven't got my period. I was thinking it was abnormal because I had the miscarriage and who knew? So, um, on January 6th, my husband went to work that night and I was so nervous to take this test. Um, but I was like, okay, well it might not be accurate because you're supposed to use like your urine sample from the morning. Um, so I took the test and I got a faint line and I was like, okay, it could be like, you know, the indentation line. Um, I originally just got the like one from Walmart, um, not like the little one, but the like actual long one. Um, so after I took that one, I ran out, got a clear blue test, like the pack that had like the digital and the one that like has the plus sign. Um, so I was like, okay, I'll just take it in the morning took it in the morning the next day, got a pregnant on the digital test and a plus sign on the other test. So I was feeling every type of emotion because I just went through a miscarriage. I didn't get my period back, but somehow I got pregnant. So I called my doctor. Um, she was shocked because she knew that I just had a miscarriage and I went in and she was like, congratulations, you're six weeks and um, everything looks good right now. Um, we're going to set your next appointment up for um, between 10 and 12 weeks um, to do another scan. And um, if you want like blood work done for early gender results, da, 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 da. Everything was great. So happy, so overjoyed. Told my husband um, a couple days later and it was great. Went in for my 10 week scan saw some abnormalities on the scan. Um, they said that the nuchal fold, um, which is like the skin on the back of the baby's neck was a little bit thicker than it should have been, but nothing too alarming. So she wasn't worried. Um, she said that even though they gave me a gestational age, that since I technically didn't have a cycle, that their like measurement of time could be off by a little. So she wasn't like too concerned. Um, I got the NIPT test, which is the non-invasive prenatal testing done just because of that red flag and um, because I was impatient, I wanted to find out the gender. Um, and then two weeks later, I was in bed, I was passed out asleep and my phone rings and it's like 8.30 in the morning. I'm in the midst of my morning sickness and everything else. And I answer my phone, they say it's my results from my genetic testing. And they said that my son could possibly have Down syndrome. And I was 
so shocked. I was feeling everything. I was half asleep. I was crying. My husband was in the living room and I was crying and he didn't know I was crying. But um, at that point as well, they had the gender and because of the gender, um, she said that we can tell you the gender because that does change things for your results. Um, if you want to know, if not, we will have to tell you though, when you come in to see the genetic counselor. And I was like, okay, well, um, you can just tell me, um, like, I'd rather just know. So I know what I'm walking into. Um, and then that's when I found out that I was having a boy and I was so happy, but I was so heartbroken at the same time. Like, I felt like my body failed me. I felt like I was failing as a mother, that my body didn't do anything correctly, that my son was going to have this disability that I had no clue how to even think about at the moment. Um, I felt like I was failing my husband because I couldn't give him a healthy child. Um, and I was just feeling every type of emotion. And it was one of the best slash worst days probably of my life, <laughs> um, just because of everything that I was feeling. Um, so I scheduled an appointment with my genetic counselor, and this is a disclaimer. Um, I will not disclose her name. I will not disclose any information about her, um, but I will say that that visit was horrible. Um, she is no longer in practice, um, but when I went in, I went in with, you know, just wanting answers. I wanted probabilities, um, tests, you know, of like what the percentage was of my son possibly having this and everything else. So I went in, one of my coworkers came with me who, which was a blessing because my husband could not get off work at all. And I really wanted somebody with me just because I knew I was going to be emotional. I wanted somebody else to hear everything that was being said. Um, and with that, um, she pretty much told me that since nothing ran in the family and there were no other signs that um, it was probably random, there was nothing you could have done wrong or anything of that sort, but she told me that I needed to terminate my pregnancy because there was a 0 0.08 chance that my son was going to make it. And in that moment, I was like, no, like, that's not an option. We are going to stick out this pregnancy and whatever happens, happens and we will deal with it if that was the case scenario. But I wasn't going to do that intentionally. Um, and it got pressed on me really, really hard um, during that um, visit. It was brought up beginning, middle and end after I was just asking questions. Um, like, what did I, like, what do I do from this point? Does this change my pregnancy, like, appointments, everything, all the way up until birth. So, at that point, I no longer saw that doctor. I did not worry about anything genetically wise. I did end up having to go to a high-risk doctor because of the potential diagnosis that I was given, um, and as I was seeing my first high-risk doctor, she pretty much told me the same thing, that babies with Down syndrome more than likely don't make it to term, that they do end up passing on their own inside the womb, and that she was recommending that I get induced at 20 weeks and get a DNC and pretty much, you know, just end my pregnancy. And I get, once again said, no, that's not an option. Like, besides that, there was nothing else wrong at the time. Um, he was on the smaller end. Now, during my pregnancy, I was not very big. And before I got pregnant, I was only 108 pounds. So I didn't really have a lot of room for him to grow. But he wasn't so far behind that it was a red flag either. He was measuring one to two weeks behind. Um, it just depend on like every time that I went because he had little gross spurts where he was like only a week behind and then he was two weeks behind but then he caught up and it was just like that my whole pregnancy. Um, so at this point, um, I'm, I'm constantly crying throughout my pregnancy. I was so scared. I 
didn't tell anybody because of the fact that I was so scared. Um, I didn't know what people were going to think. Um, I was worried that people weren't going to love my son. Um, and at that point I was like, okay, well, if it is this, I can't change it. And I know I'm going to love him regardless. And I knew that my husband was going to love him regardless. I had no idea what my family was going to be like. I had no idea what my husband's family was going to be like response wise. Um, it was all new to us, especially. So I didn't tell anybody because I didn't have information and I didn't have answers. So, um, it was really hard mentally. Um, we're at the point now to where I still get a little bit emotional talking about it because, you know, you always question like, why me? And like, you know, why did this happen? And like, oh, my body failed me. And, um, you know, those thoughts are always there, but you come to terms with the fact that, um, like it wasn't your fault and that nine out of 10 times, this is like random when, um, like fertilization happens, something happens with the cell division and it just has an extra chromosome. So, um, at this point in my pregnancy, um, we still had no, like, 100% confirmed diagnosis. Um, they offered me an amniocentesis, which is where they will stick a long needle in your belly into the um, fluid sac of the baby and pull some fluid out. And if there is anything in there, genetic-wise, that they can pull from, they'll run a test and see if they can confirm the diagnosis. Now, with this, there are, com there are risks. So, there was... Excuse me. There was risk that you can miscarry. It can cause. Excuse me. Sorry, my allergies. Um. You could go into labor early. There were just too many risks that I wasn't willing to take already with everything that was going on. Um. So I denied that and I said, "Well, when he's born, we're gonna find out regardless." Um, and throughout my pregnancy, we did end up finding out that my son was probably going to have clubfoot, um, which wasn't a huge concern, um, because I knew that it could be fixed. Um, but again, that wasn't a hundred percent confirmed either because when I went for my imaging for ultrasounds, he was never really positioned right for them to see both his feet. Um, so they were basing it off of that. Either he could just be in a ball since I'm so small and his foot was like this or that his foot was actually inverted. Um, so then at 35 weeks, I ended up getting admitted to the hospital because um, I had some growth restrictions that were not progressing and the blood through the umbilical cord was um, having a little bit of a gap. So there would be like two seconds to where the blood wasn't actually flowing. Um, so I ended up getting admitted to the hospital and was there for a couple days. I had to get the shots to um, develop his lungs just in case if I did go into preterm labor. And thankfully I didn't. Um, the blood flow ended up fixing itself, I guess. Um, and then I ended up scheduling my induction for 37 weeks and two days. Um, and then on August 29th, I ended up going to the doctor and was there for a little bit and he told me that I was going to have the baby, that I needed to go to the hospital because the blood flow again was having some like problems and that this time that there was no time to wait that we needed to start your induction process. So at this point, um, it was August 30th, sorry, August 30th and then at that point, I was like not expecting to go to the hospital so I had to go home, grab my hospital bag, call my husband, he was at work, go to the hospital, get all set up, get set up in my room. I was so nervous. I was not expecting to get induced. Now meanwhile, I was supposed to get to I was go, supposed to go to the hospital 2 days later. So it really wasn't that early, but it was that early. So now I'm in the hospital. I'm thinking in my head, we're going to find out all these answers. I'm so nervous. I don't know what's going to happen. Everything was running through my head. So that when I got there that night, um, my doctor came in, saw what was going on, said, okay, let's start this process. 
I ended up getting all set up and ended up having Cervidil. Um, and I got that all throughout the night and I was very slowly progressing. And then my water broke the next day at like 9 or 10 in the morning. And they didn't know that my water broke because I was leaking fluid. And then it finally broke. And then they were like, oh, okay, so you should be progressing now. So then they put me on Pitocin. Pitocin kicked in. I was on Pitocin for the whole day until about 4, 4 o'clock. And then it started getting really bad. And I asked for the epidural got the epidural, ended up having a reaction to the epidural. So, um, my heart rate was dropping, my son's heart rate was dropping, nothing to the extreme because it would go back, his heart rate would go back up after every contraction, but it was dropping drastically. So, my doctor said that I was going to end up needing a c-section. Now, I was so scared because that was my worst fear. I did not want a c-section. I wanted to do natural, like, vaginal birth, um, but I knew I needed to do what was best for my son and I was crying, I was feeling all types of things again, and um, it happened so fast. I was, say, probably like 30, 45 minutes from that point on. Um, I was back in the room. Um, I did end up, like, telling the doctors I felt everything so they would max out my medicine because that's how scared I was. Um, but then on August 31st at... 442 my son was born and it was the best day of my life um now there was every prenatal NICU nurse in the room there was probably 12 people in there 14 counting me and my husband and they were ready to do whatever they had to do with him because of everything that I was going through for my pregnancy um and then with this being said I'm laying on the table and my husband is over there, you know, cutting the umbilical cord and doing all these things and oh, my dog just fell off the bed. <laughs> and pretty much, you know, I'm like laying there thinking like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Like, I'm not going to be able to see him for a couple hours. They're going to take him away to the NICU. And the doctor comes by and says, everything looks great. We don't need to see him. His oxygen levels are good. Your husband's over there. We're going to go. And like eight of these doctors left. So then it's just my doctor and the couple people, you know, stitching me up and whatnot. And then they bring them over to me and he's so cute and so chubby and I love it. And in my head, I'm thinking like, okay, like everything's okay. Like we don't have to worry. We don't have to, you know, like, even though they didn't say anything, like, there was nothing being said yet. Now, after this, we got back to the room, um, you know, we were breastfeeding, and he was latching great, and um, he ended up having jaundice, so we had to get the um, blue light on him in the room, which was nice that he didn't have to go to the NICU, and then after all of this, pretty much, the first pediatrician that came in that was on rotation um, was so rough with my son. I didn't like it. I was crying. My husband left to go get food at that point, and I just was like, like, I don't know. I just didn't like the way she was handling him. And then because of his foot, he did have club foot. I saw that, but I wasn't concerned. But she was messing with his foot, and then I realized after she messed with his foot, he was a little bit more fussy than usual than he was because he was so calm he was feeding he wasn't he just wasn't himself so then I had to call the nurse in and the nurse had I told the nurse how I felt and I didn't want her back in the room and or touching my son again so then that's when my pediatrician came in that I see now and this is my dog Bubby lay down lay down lay down lay down come on Okay, well, I guess he's going to stay. Um, <laughs> and so my pediatrician came in. He looked at him. He said everything looked great. Uh, I scheduled my appointment with him, um, you know, a couple days after we were out. And I asked, obviously, about the diagnosis, and nobody had any answers. Um, he got the blood test done there. They didn't get enough blood to get a definitive answer so they said that we could do it outpatient and I said okay Bubby stop 
And so we did that. And Bubby, stop. Stop. Come here. Come here. No. And, you know, with that being said, we were like, okay. So I did the outpatient genetic testing and I did it twice and they still couldn't get a good stick or enough blood. So from this point forward, I talked to my pediatrician about it. Um, he does have some of the physical features um, and I'm not like denying anything that my pediatrician says, um, but I obviously just don't want him getting sticked every month. Um, he already has like small veins and everything else and he is a hard stick. So I usually have to get like an IV team in there to stick him. Um, but we are confirming the diagnosis and that finally the genetic testing is getting redone in a couple of weeks and they're going to do a different way this time, which I wish they would have told me before, um, just to see like everything that we need to handle. But, um, we wouldn't have traded it for the world and I wouldn't change anything because he is so cute and he is such a blessing and, you know, I really just like feel like, you know, that a lot of my joy was stolen because of a lot of the negative things that I went through and it shouldn't have been that way. Um, but we are who we are and we love who we love and it doesn't matter of anything of sort of disability or anything like that. Um, there are some other health concerns obviously that we're dealing with that don't need to be spoken about because it is personal and it is family. Um, issues but we are so thankful for him and you know I always say like he was that 0.08% chance of living because he really did push through my whole pregnancy and I made sure I did everything right on my end to make sure that he was gonna make it to term and that I was able to have him um, but like really it was all up to him he ended up also having holes in his heart at the beginning of my pregnancy that they saw and I saw a pediatric cardiologist um, throughout my whole pregnancy and um, he said that if anything anyways they wouldn't operate on him until he's a couple months old and he has to be a certain weight anyway um, but then we ended up seeing the cardiologist afterwards after he was born and the holes were gone so uh, we are thankful for that like that there was no congenital heart defect or anything because that was something that was a big concern for us um, and kids with Down syndrome, they usually do have like a valve issue. So we are thankful that we, you know, that he definitely healed from that. And we praise the Lord for that because that was going to be a very, very stressful thing to go through. Knowing that your couple month old baby is going to have open heart surgery so soon. Um, but yeah, so this is just you know, like a brief summary of everything that I've went through. Um, but this is also just because I want like families out there to know that um, if you're getting a hard diagnosis, if you're getting something that, you know, is just really hard to digest specifically like mentally, um, what you're feeling is valid and you're allowed to feel it and you can grieve how you need to grieve and, you know, do what you have to do to get past, but don't look at it as a bad thing. Um, like, he has brought so much joy to my life, and, you know, I guess, like, he would not be, like, who he is, so, um, yeah. Like, it's okay. Like, you can feel what you need to feel. But, like, this is the hard part. It's when you're alone and you're thinking and, you know, people aren't around and it's hard. And, you know, praise to single moms because, like, this is hard, like, especially if you don't have a support system, but, like, 
this community has been so welcoming to me and my son. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. And to the family, like, who does support me and, you know, like, is willing to help and, like, all these other things, like, it goes so far because the littlest things you do, like, make the difference. And even people who aren't family, like, the, you know, like, just the love that you give is important. So, just be kind to everybody because... There are things that you don't see behind closed doors and cut off the people that you need to cut off because those are the people that will affect this tremendously and know that you have like more people on your side than against you because I've learned just to cut the people out and I don't tolerate them and you're allowed to do that for the safety of your family and yourself because... Your mental state is crucial, especially for your kids. Like, I never cry in front of him, like, over stuff like this because I don't want him to see this. Like, he's not, he's not gonna, like, benefit from me feeling this way. But it's like, you wish you could do better, you know? Like, you wish that you could change the way people are gonna treat him and the way that they're gonna treat your kids because they are different. So, um... Yeah, this is the raw video of my channel, and after this, they will definitely be edited and I will not be crying. Um, but if you have any questions about anything, please feel free to ask in the comments or DM me. Um, the Down Syndrome community is awesome. Um, I've met so many cool people. Um, some girls are like the funniest things to hang out with especially because when you get with them and your kids are around each other um they kind of do some silly stuff um but we all have the moments we all cry with each other we all talk about it every kid is difficult with a disability or not um they all do cute things they all do funny things they all do stupid things that we are just like why but um this is this is where we are um, when you're watching this video, he's going to be probably almost six months old, and he's thriving. Um, we haven't had, thankfully, we haven't had anything major happen. Um, and, yeah, so, um, thanks for watching. It's been great, Bubby. <laughs> you saw my dog, like, 10 million times interrupt me. Um but like subscribe um i'm gonna try to put out a video every wednesday um and this will be like the start of this um and yeah like i said i'm gonna try to edit them um to the best of my ability um like i said this is raw unfiltered nothing is edited this is all videoed like one shot how i feel who i am um oh yeah my name <laughs> Um, uh, I'm Kiara. I'm not gonna say my last name. Um, but I will tag my Instagrams, um, down here, down here, um, on my videos. Not now, on the ones that I'm gonna make. Um, but it's the same as my YouTube tag. And you can follow me on there. Um, I also have a TikTok. It's the, also the same name. Um, and you will see more of me soon. So... Thanks for watching, friends, and we will see you next Wednesday.